I'm with Zach, who's working with the Palestinian Bible Society. Now, Zach, what projects are you involved with? I'm involved in East Nablus project, which is it's uh, empowering youth leaders in the region of uh, South Nablus. Is youth work very important here in the land? Of course, because the majority of the Palestinian people, statistics speak that uh, 62% of the population are youth. And how easy is it to work with the youth community? It's not easy because uh, we're coming with a total different perspective because this, these youth, they grew, grow up under the second intifada and it's too violent and there is a big gap between cultures, villages, cities because of the closers. Israel had for so many years closers between cities and villages. So all of these villages are in uh, cities were isolated for so long time and we're breaking borders. How do youth feel today? Do youth feel very depressed and down and, and, and finding it difficult living within this, the Palestinian Authority? No, I find, I, I'm seeing lots of hope. But do some of them feel like there's a sense of hopelessness? Usually, yes, because they compare themselves to Israel and to freedom. So they get it, yes. And what projects do you do with the youth? We're empowering, you know, uh, leaders in all kind of projects, especially we uh, training them for uh, uh, new roles. Is there a big need for youth leaders here in the community? Of course, because leaders are the leaders soon. Youth leaders are the leaders soon, so we need to equip them. And in what sort of ways do you equip the leaders here in the land? Non-corruption, openness to other cultures, and uh, we train them to uh, reach outside and to express themselves with non-violence and easy. Is that an easy thing to do, particularly when you've got youth that are really, really frustrated and, and struggling with the situation that's here in the land? Is it easy to tell people, well, no, you need to be non-violent? It takes time. Yeah. It takes time. Because we are, as human beings, Many times we lean to, non, to be non-violent, but if we have it, you know, it takes time just like to uh, kind of rehabilitation, yeah. to have a special kind of rehabilitation. Are there many jobs for, for the youth in Nablus? No, not really. So we're using this, uh, their free time to volunteer and do other projects and to, the, to do local initiatives in their areas. Mm. So we're using this for our benefit. And what other projects do you do within the Nablus area? What other projects? We do health, you know, seminars, marriage, and we have lots of things we did with orphans, kids that they've lost their parents through violence, football, cultural uh, programs, uh, trips, you know, in different areas so we exp they can explore to other cultures and to the history and to the richness of the land. I'm sure football is very, very important to the Palestinian. What's their favourite football team at the moment? Barcelona. <laughs> See, I'm a Real Madrid man, so that's, that's, that's not what I want to hear. And I'm a Manchester United fan as well. But uh, is football a great way of breaking into their lives and encouraging them? Yes, the PA has been spending millions of money to, on uh, playgrounds and footballs. You know, it's the uh, gladiators of the of this generation. You know, <laughs> people love to watch it and express their anger and stress. And you say you do projects with health as well. Uh, are people really, really poor that you need to come in and help them with the health projects that are, that are happening in Nablus? In certain areas, yes. In certain areas, yes. And, you know, uh, what we do with health is uh, uh, not medical only, you know, only just like uh, information, you know, and clarifying things for them so they could do better in their lives. Do you find that there is a, a lack of education as far as health is concerned within Nablus? It has been closed for so many years. So there is lack of lots of things. No. And do you bring doctors into the community to help uh, with the special needs that are there? Yes, we've did many times. We bring doctors and medicine, and we have we do uh, 
kind of a doctor's day in certain villages. And that must be very well received from the community. Of course, people love to see outsiders and, you know, people that uh, solidarities, you know, do solidarity with them and show them love. People love to welcome them and they're very hard, uh, they're very warm people, warm hearted, they welcome anyone. And uh, you were talking about marriage counselling. Is marriage counselling important for the Palestinian community? Of course. They have lots of divorce and we have big problems with gender and women is always a second class. So she's treated as a second class outside and the house and inside the house. So we work on gender, you know, that woman is not a second class outside and she's not a second class inside. So it's really encouraging the whole community and lifting the whole community up, isn't it? Uh, exactly, because they need it. They need it. The violence comes uh, as outcome of non-communication. You know, when there is no communication, violence becomes the way. So we try to open them to different cultures and train them and you know educate them in so many ways so they can uh, express their need or their point of view with no violence. So how has the projects that you've been doing actually been affecting the community? Uh, uh, I remember two years ago, I've asked one of the leaders, actually a friend of mine that came from outside, asked the leader, who was one of the training leaders, do you have any Jewish friends? And he made it a big story. How could I have Jewish friends? They're all with guns. And all what they want is to kill me and take my home. No. A few months ago, through the opening cultures, I find out that he made a Jewish friend in Tel Aviv. So th th through these two years, we were able to let him to communicate and have a Jewish friend. And I hope it will continue and give him different perspective of Jews. Because, you know, so he can understand that they, not all Jews want to kill, kill them, kill him, and he don't want to, he don't have to kill them. It's breaking down the wall and breaking down the barriers. Exactly, yeah. yes, yes. Now, why do you do the work that you're doing? Personally, I'm so influenced and impacted by, the, by Jesus Christ. So I believe uh, I'm doing this as a reflecting the light of Jesus Christ in my life and his love to nations. And uh, what's your prayer for Nablus? Nablus, it's very dark spiritually. Very dark. People don't know God, you know, and uh, they don't know Jesus. And because they don't know Jesus, they'll never know God because only Jesus exposed God and made him known. So my prayer is that they'll get to know the immorality and the teaching of Jesus, so they can know God in a better way, and in His shining, you know, loving picture. What's my What's my hope for Nablus? My hope for Nablus is more people, more Westerns will visit Nablus and help them to see the outside more, because Nablus has been closed, you know, for ten years, and the people in Nablus have no communication with people outside. And they have a dark picture for others. Is it difficult for Palestinians who live in Nablus to travel into other parts of the Palestinian Authority? No, it's easy, but it was very, it was impossible for so many years. So you had family members who hadn't actually seen other family members, perhaps. For me, yes, you know, not in my father's side, but in my through my mother's side and my wife's side, they haven't seen their family members for ten years. And finally, what's the website for the Palestinian Bible Society for people who'd like to know more? www.pbs-web.com Okay, Zach, thank you very much. Thank you.